Hey friends, today I have one of my favorite videos to film at the end of every year. I'm going to be sharing with you all of the makeup products that I used up in 2022. This is always just such a fun way of looking back at the year and seeing how many products I was able to use up compared to previous years. I've been doing these year-end makeup empties since 2019, so I'm going to be comparing how many products I used up this year to the last three years. And we're just going to take a little walk down memory lane with the makeup that I used up. I always feel like these end-of-year makeup empties videos are such a fun little time capsule of the year. I love looking back on past years, and it's always just so satisfying to see empty makeup products. Normally these videos I film overhead style, but halfway through this year we actually moved, so I saved up my makeup empties until that point, and I just took pictures of those products because I didn't want to take essentially trash with me across the country, so I am going to be showing photos of those products that I used up in the first six months, and then I have the products that I used up in the second half of the year here in front of me that I can actually physically show you. Before we get into the products, I want to go ahead and share the total number of products that I used up this year. So in 2022, I used up 25 makeup products, which is pretty much on par with previous years. In 2021, I used up 29 products. That's actually the most products that I've used up in any of my recent years. 2020, I used up 27 items, and in 2019, I used up 19. So 25 is about what I would have expected, and that's a lot of products that I used up fully. So with that out of the way, let me go ahead and show you the products that I used up this year. We're gonna just go category by category through a full face of makeup. Starting with foundation, I actually didn't have any primer, any face primer empties this year. The first category that I did use something up in was foundation. And I used up one foundation this year, and it was the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. I love this so much that I ended up repurchasing it. And really what I hope to see in these year-end makeup empties videos is a bunch of my favorite products. I want all of the products that I finished up to be products that I actually loved. Not only did I get my money's worth out of those products, but they're products I actually enjoyed using up. And this was certainly one of those things. Definitely one of my all-time favorite complexion products. I loved it so much that I already repurchased another one and I'm already working through that one. So highly enjoyed that product. The next category is concealer. And this year I used up three concealers, which I think is a lot more than usual. One of these was a mini sized concealer, but I still count those as one full size. The first concealer that I used up this year was the Pacifica Liquid Cover Concealer. I didn't particularly love this one. I didn't actually like it as a concealer, so the way that I used it up was as a foundation. Even though I didn't like this concealer as a concealer, I loved the way it looked on my skin all over the face, so that's how I ended up using it up and I was able to go through it pretty quickly since I was applying it all over my face. The next concealer I used up this year that I have here is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer. This I had in the shade 20 CP, and this was a mini. Loved this so much. This was the first time I had tried this, and I loved it so much that I ended up purchasing a full size of it, and now it sounds like they're discontinuing this one, so... I feel like Urban Decay discontinues so many of their products, especially their complexion products. It seems like they leave a complexion product on the market for maybe three years, and then they phase it out and come out with a whole new line of complexion products, which I wish they wouldn't do. It's hard to find a concealer or foundation that you absolutely love, so when you find one that you love, you become loyal to it and you want to repurchase it, over and over again, so I'm really upset with them for <laughs> discontinuing this, but I will be enjoying my full size hopefully for a while, but love that one, another favorite. The third concealer I used up, I just finished this up like a week or so ago. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. This was my favorite concealer for such a long time. I feel like it's one of those products that has been kind of dethroned now. I've found some other formulas that I like better, especially as my preferences have changed. I prefer something more lightweight. And this is just a little bit thicker than what I'm into these days, but I am still really glad that I finished it up. And this took forever to use up. This I feel like I got a really good bang for my buck with this. It's already pretty affordable concealer at, I think it's $7 now, but it lasted me a very long time. So I enjoyed that, but this one I don't plan on repurchasing. I also used up two face powders this year. The first one was another one of my favorites. This is the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder. If somebody asked me to recommend a pressed powder, this is the one I'd recommend. Drugstore or high-end, this is amazing. I wore the shade Fair. It just does the job. It mattifies, but it doesn't look dry. It's nice and thin and finely milled, so it doesn't feel like you're applying like a thick layer of powder on your face. It's just beautiful. I cannot wait to have this again in my collection. The other powder I finished up was the e.l.f. Sheer Tint Finishing Powder, another one that they seem to be discontinuing. This I had in the shade Fair Light. I enjoyed this too. I actually thought it was similar to the CoverGirl Clean Fresh, 
but this shade being the lightest shade that they offer was actually still a little bit too deep for me and I think I just prefer the CoverGirl one slightly more than this but this one was really nice too it was a little bit blurring and smoothing to the skin but I don't think I'd repurchase it even if it was still available. Next category, I used up one setting spray this year. This is one that I hardly even remember finishing this year. I think it was almost done at the beginning of this year and I used it up in probably January or February, but it was the Pixi Rose Glow Mist. I loved this one while I had it, but I haven't really wanted to repurchase it because I found a luminous setting spray that I like better, the Revolution Fix and Glow. I like this better because it doesn't feel oily on my skin. The Pixie Glow Mist and Rose Glow Mist, which is basically the same thing, they actually have oil in them and if you have super dry skin you might like that, but even though I have pretty dry skin a lot of the year, I just, I don't love the feeling of having oil on my face. Even though it really does look beautiful, I prefer something more like this that actually sort of dries down. It doesn't feel like it remains tacky on your skin. So that one I wouldn't repurchase, but I did enjoy it while I had it. For blush, I used up one blush this year. Any blush that I can use up, I am always so over the moon excited because blush is one of the products that takes the longest to use up. It doesn't take me as long to use up blush as it used to because I'm just a little bit more heavy handed with my blush than I used to be, but it still takes a very long time. And this year I finished up one of my favorite blushes of all time, the Cloven Hallow Hydra Tint Serum Blush in Blossom. This is the one that was in that little bottle that looked like a nail polish bottle. And I'm so sad, but I think Cloven Hallow is no longer a brand, at least for now. It sounds like they might come back in the future, but their sister company called Clover is still around and they actually make more affordable products. So. It's not like they're completely gone, but this blush I think they discontinued a while ago anyway, which I was heartbroken about because it is such a good blush. This was like my perfect blush color, the easiest liquid blush to work with. You could just dot a little bit on with the brush and it would blend out so easily. The color was perfect. It was like that perfect neutral light pink that would just go with anything. So I miss this one fondly, but I do feel like I found some blushes that I like equally well this year, like the Flower Blush in Sweet Pea. I feel like that's kind of a similar shade. And also the Elf Luminous Putty Blush in Maui is another kind of similar color. If this blush were still available, I would probably repurchase it. And that is saying a lot because I don't think I have ever repurchased a blush in my entire life, but that was such an iconic product in my collection that I probably would buy it again if I could. I used up one highlighter this year. It was a mini liquid highlighter, but even being a mini, it took a very long time to use up. It was the Becca Mini Liquid Highlight in Champagne Pop. I still have the powder version of this highlighter. Even though I'm not a big liquid and cream highlighter person, I still really enjoyed this highlighter. I probably wouldn't buy it again if it were still available because I prefer powder highlighter nowadays, but Champagne Pop, you know, is one of my favorite highlighter shades ever. Just a beautiful golden, but not, not too deep even for fair skin, at least my skin tone, it wasn't too deep. Just gave the perfect, like, sun-drenched glow. Stunning. And as I'm going through these products, I really do feel like the majority of these were things that I love. And that's always the goal. I don't want to have a bunch of empties at the end of the year that I didn't like that I kind of like forced myself through because where is the fun in that, <laughs> you know? Next category would be bronzer, but I didn't use up any bronzers this year. I'm hoping to use up at least one bronzer next year. I think bronzer is even harder for me to use up than blush. And out of all the cheat categories, I think that highlighter is the hardest one for me to use up, followed by bronzer. I think bronzer and blush are tied because I use about the same amount of both, but um, cheek products are really difficult to get through, so I'm proud to at least have had two cheek empties this year. Last year I had a lot more though. I think I used up two blushes, maybe even two highlighters. It was a good year for cheek products last year. Next for eyeshadow primers, I used up one of these this year, which I think is about the typical amount of these that I go through in a year. I usually just always just have one that I'm working through and takes me about a year to go through them. So this year I used up the Urban Decay Primer Potion, such a classic product. I did really enjoy this. I don't think I would repurchase this. It does go on sale for half off like multiple times a year, so you definitely should never buy this full price. It is a really good eyeshadow primer. I can see why so many people love it, but the thing I didn't like about it was actually the packaging. I really don't like the fact that it had a doe foot and a squeeze tube. I would prefer for it to just be a regular squeeze tube because it, that would make it a lot easier to get everything out. Once I got towards the end, it became really hard to pick up anything 
on the doe foot so I would have to kind of squeeze it up and then dip the applicator in. And I feel like if I were to actually cut into this, it would probably dry out really quickly, so that's why I didn't bother with that. So really the only reason I wouldn't buy this again is because of the packaging. I, I, if they put it in a regular squeeze tube, I definitely would consider it. I also used up two brow products this year. I guess you could maybe count this as three, but I'm just gonna say it's two. You'll see why. So I used up the Urban Decay Brow Blade, which is a dual-ended product, so I wasn't sure whether, the, whether to count this as one or two. But I think because each side comes with like a smaller amount of product, Product than like a full-size brow pencil and a full-size brow pen. I decided to just count it as one item. I loved this product. This is actually what got me into brow pens because before this I had never tried a brow pen before and now that is one of my preferred ways of filling in my brows. I could really take or leave the pencil side of this. I used it up because it was there but I don't really like buying brow pencils because I just go through them so quickly, especially the really thin ones like this. So that's why I avoid them because I feel like it just creates so much extra waste. So that's really the main reason I wouldn't buy this again is because I just don't need the pencil. And I ended up finding a drugstore brow pen that I like just as much, the NYX Lift and Snatch, so similar to this. As long as you can find the right shade in that one, it's fantastic. So that's probably the one I'll continue to buy or I would maybe try some other drugstore ones. But I'm really glad that I tried this because it really expanded my horizons with brow products. This brow product I did not enjoy, but I just used it up anyway. This is the Pacifica Highest Def Hemp Fiber Brow Gel in clear. I I just talked about this in my most recent like regular empties video, so I won't like repeat all of that, but it just really didn't do anything for my brows. It gave very little hold, and I think I just prefer tinted brow gels anyway, so that I would not repurchase. I used up two eyeliners this year. First, I used up the CoverGirl Coal Eyeliner Pencil in Rich Brown. That one I used up really early on this year. That was a great eyeliner. I definitely would consider buying it again if I'm in the market for another brown pencil liner at any point, but I don't know if I'd actually repurchase it because I think I would just prefer to try a new eyeliner, one that I haven't tried before because I just I get a thrill out of trying new products as you can probably tell it's why I have a YouTube channel so I probably wouldn't buy that again but uh, it was really nice I enjoyed it. Actually both of the eyeliners that I used up this year were brown eyeliners and I would say that was my most commonly worn eyeliner shade this year. Anytime I was using either a pencil or a liquid liner, it was a brown one. The liquid liner that I used up this year was the Flower Beauty Forever Wear Winged Liner in Dark and Stormy. Loved this so much, especially the shape of the tip, the felt tip. I feel like, I, can't, I know I'm, I can't be alone in this, but for me, the most important thing with a liquid liner is the shape of either the brush or the, the felt tip because that determines how easy it is to apply and we all know winged liner is not easy to apply as it is so I need something that's going to really help me get a nice even smooth line and this did that for me. This is not waterproof that's the only thing I will say. I think the next brown liquid liner I want to try is the Fenty Fly Liner. I think the shade is... I don't remember the shade but it's the brown shade. That's the one I want to try next because I've heard Kelly Gooch raving about that one and it looks like a really nice true like chocolate brown. This was a dark brown, but it still did look brown. That one looks like an even better brown shade though. So that's probably the one I'll get next. I don't think I'd repurchase this even though I really liked it. And I would recommend it as long as you're not looking for something waterproof. It's a solid liquid liner, but same with the other eyeliner. I would just prefer to try something new. I used up a lot of mascaras this year, six mascaras, but Four of them were full sizes and then two of them were minis. One of those minis was really more of a like deluxe sample, not even really a full sized mini. I actually used up a brown mascara this year, the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume in Brown. I enjoyed this, but with this mascara I learned that I just don't think brown mascara is for me, at least not right now. I really like brown eyeliner, but I just feel like brown mascara doesn't make my eyelashes stand out as much as I would like for them to. I really like a nice dramatic dark lash, and brown mascara it just looks a little more subtle than what I prefer. But the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume Mascara is one of my top recommendations, and I feel like the number one type of product that people in my personal life ask me for recommendations on is mascara. I have had so many friends, family members, just random people that I've met ask me, what mascara do you recommend? And I typically recommend both this one and of course the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity. Those are my two current recommendations. But I always recommend the CoverGirl Lash Blast because it's so accessible and it's just so good. It really does give you a beautiful, long, separated lash 
and it's very long wearing as well. They do make a waterproof one. I would always get the non-waterproof and it really doesn't smudge on me or transfer. So this is one of those products that I always kind of keep in my back pocket as a go-to recommendation because it's just so good. There's a reason why it's been around and adored for so long. Four out of the six mascaras I used up this year were high-end, which is very unusual for me. First, we had the Ilia Fullest Volumizing Mascara. I forgot about this one, honestly, until I went back to look at these photos because it seems like forever ago that I finished this one. But this one, you might remember, I did not recommend. It made my lashes look nice, but it was really nothing special, and it was like smudge city on me. So that one, especially for the price, I, I would not recommend. Another one I definitely wouldn't recommend, this one was in my worst of 2022 video, the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara. This one was a flaky mess. I've heard that from so many people. Also, the packaging was really annoying. Another sort of dud was the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes. This is the one that I had just like a little deluxe sample of, but the deluxe sample lasted me I think close to three months if I remember correctly. So it was a pretty good sized sample. This is another one I definitely wouldn't buy the full size of. I think I got it as a gift with purchase. So glad I was able to try it out, but it just didn't do anything remarkable for my lashes. It was kind of lengthening, but that was about it. And I've tried plenty of drugstore mascaras that I liked better than this one. So that one was just, just okay. Not bad, but not something that I would go out of my way to acquire again. The last two mascaras I do have here in front of me, so the other mini I used up this year was the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara, another amazing product that they have discontinued, which I'm so mad about. That's okay though, because I found something that I like better that's cheaper, but this one has a really strange brush. It looks like a caterpillar, kind of gross, but this will give you just the most dramatic, ridiculous, false lash looking lashes. Uh, which is why I loved it so much. This was the second tube of this that I had gone through. You might be able to still find this at like a really good discount, so if you can, I would recommend it, but I probably won't be buying that one again because I discovered the Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara, which is one of my favorites of the year. This was included in my 2022 favorites this year. This one I will absolutely be repurchasing. This has an amazing brush. You know I love the Rubber Bristle Wands. Those are my favorite, as you can tell. This one and... All, all three of my favorites from this year, the Milani, the Urban Decay, and the CoverGirl Lash Blast all have the rubber bristle brushes, so I just need to stop buying anything that doesn't have this kind of brush, honestly. But this will make your lashes look so dramatic. Really everything I said about the Lash Freak, I would also say about this, except for the fact that the brush is a lot easier to work with and it's not nearly as clumpy as Lash Freak, but it gives that same amazing volume and length it makes your lashes stand out from a distance and not just close up, which is really what I want in a mascara. I want true volume and this gives it without giving you that look like you only have four really thick lashes. Very glad to have tried that this year. I did really well with lip products this year, especially lip glosses, but I did use up one lip liner and that was the Jordana lip liner in Rockin' Rose. Such an old product. That brand has been out of business since 2020. I miss them still, I really do. They were one of my favorite drugstore brands. They made some amazing lip liners, but I did find some new favorites this year from Koki that I like even better than these. But if these liners were still around, I would definitely repurchase. Rock and Rose and Tawny were my two favorites from the Jordana lip liners, and I would definitely still have those colors in my collection if they still made them. I used up four lip glosses this year. So proud of myself. I hope to use up that many again next year. I used up two of my favorite drugstore lip glosses in the first half of the year. The Milani Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper in Soft Rose, my favorite nude lip gloss. I, I keep meaning to repurchase that and I keep forgetting, but next time I see it on sale, I'm gonna grab it because that is, to this day, my all-time favorite lip gloss. I went most of this year without it in my collection and I, I really do miss it. The shade of this gloss almost perfectly matches the natural shade of my lips, but it's a really nice opaque gloss. So it just, it looks so good on my lips because it's my natural lip color, but it also just makes my lips look so full and even. So that was my favorite of all the four lip glosses I used up this year. I also used up the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Pink Cosmo, which is a little bit more of a sheer, milky, light pink color beautiful color. I also really would like to repurchase this one at some point, but probably not as high of a priority as the Milani one. Those e.l.f. lip plumping glosses, I do feel like they go pretty quickly, and they're really easy to track progress on because when you set them upright, the gloss settles so you can see exactly how much you have left. 
Um, that one was really fun to use up. I enjoyed that one. Then most recently, I actually used these both up right around the same time, which is rare. Usually it takes me a while in between glosses, but I used up my Bite Yay Sayer lip gloss in Sugar Drizzle. This was a clear gloss with gold shimmer in it. There was really nothing that special about the gloss formula itself. It was more just the packaging of this that I love. If these were still around, I probably would purchase another shade on sale for sure. I think these retailed for $25 at full price. I wouldn't spend that much on these, but I would definitely spend like $15 on one of these glosses. But unfortunately, as you might recall, Bite Beauty did go out of business earlier this year. So sad to see them go, but I'm glad that I was able to use that up this year. And I also finished up the Undone Beauty Big Papa Gloss in Watercolor Rose, which you can see it had a little bit of a pinkish red tint, but it went on completely clear and colorless. This also doubles as a lip balm, like it really does feel like a cross between a lip balm and a lip gloss. So um, I actually wore this as a nighttime lip balm quite a few times, and I also wore it during the day quite a few times, but I actually felt like this went really quickly. Once I started using it daily, it went so fast. I went from having like about half of it to it being empty within like a month. So I don't know if these necessarily give you the best value for your money, but they are, I think these are $10. If you can get these on sale, I would recommend it, but otherwise I feel like it's just not a great value. I don't know if I'd buy it again, even though I really enjoyed it. It was kind of just nice, but I don't feel like I need to have it back in my life. So those were all 25 of the makeup products that I used up this year. I also really like to share how many of these products were used up in my project pan and how many of these things did I use up naturally without actively panning them. So if I am remembering correctly on all of these, it looks like 12 out of these 25 products were project pan items. The other 13 were things that I just used up naturally. So about half and half. I think in previous years, a lot more of the products were project pan items than non-project pan items, but always cool to see that breakdown. It's just kind of an interesting metric to look at, but I don't really think it means that much. <laughs> but I, it's nice to see that I, even without putting products in a project pan, I still use things up. And I always wonder how many of these things would, would I have used up if I didn't have a project pan. I think the number would be a lot lower um, because some things really do take a lot of like active focus to actually go through, like a blush, a highlight, things like that. Even most lip glosses, I do kind of have to really focus on those in order to get them finished. But yeah, it's always I always do wonder how many things I would use up if I didn't project pan. Maybe one year I'll do an experiment with that, but not 2023. I will be doing a project pan in 2023. I'm just, once you start project panning, you kind of get the bug and you can't stop. But I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the makeup that I used up this year. This video is going up on New Year's Eve, so I want to wish you all a very happy new year. Be safe if you are doing anything tonight for New Year's Eve. And I'm just, I'm feeling really excited for the year ahead. Thank you all so much for your support this year, for watching my videos and just spending some of your time with me here on my channel. I really appreciate you all, and I hope to see you all again next year. Bye!